Hi, welcome to the Resplendent Daughter vlog here on the Empower channel. I'm Gina, and I'm so glad you stopped by today. Our topic for today is crowns and diadems. Don't you just love the word diadem? Such a beautiful word, which of course represents a type of crown. The Greek word translated crown in the New Testament is Stephanos, from which the name Stephen derives. Before we continue, though, let's open in prayer. Father, I thank you for this time together. Thank you for teaching us from your word what we need to know in order to live for Jesus Christ more fully. And I pray that you'd do that today, that you'll open our minds and our hearts to what you have for us in this study time in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so Stephen was the first New Testament martyr, and uh, he will no doubt receive at least one of these crowns that we're going to talk about today. Stephanos, the word from which Stephen is taken, means a circular badge of royalty or an honor given to a victor or a prize to the winner of athletic competitions, or sometimes it means all three for that matter. While the New Testament speaks of five different crowns, which can be earned by Christians, no one is really sure what those are going to be like when we get them, when we receive them at the Bema seat of Jesus Christ. Give me one second. <coughs> <coughs> so sorry. At any rate, we talked about the Bema seat in yesterday's post. There's not 100% agreement by Bible scholars as to what each of these five crowns will be awarded for, but one thing is for sure. They will not be awarded as symbols of someone who worked his or her way into heaven because the Bible makes it quite clear that to do that is utterly impossible. No, these crowns will be given for a Christian's faithful, enduring service after the salvation decision has been made. In 1 Corinthians 3.15, Paul gives the imagery of our Christian life actions as being put through fire at the Bema seat. Um, what endures that fire, things like that he refers to as gold, um, silver, precious stones, um, those will be our rewards. And then the things that are burned up, things like wood and hay and um, garbage or um, stubble, as the scriptures call it, will be those deeds that are done for selfish gain or out of pride or for otherwise wrong motivations. Here then is what Bible scholars generally agree uh, are the five crowns along with what each of them represents. The first one is called by many the incorruptible or the imperishable crown. And the Bible references for, for each of these crowns are given in my written blog. So if you want to go um, read and study those and look at those scriptures, I invite you to do so. The incorruptible crown seems to be for those Christians who are faithful to the Lord, who deny themselves worldly pleasures for the sake of their love for Jesus Christ, who are steadfast and true to him in their words and in their actions. Backslidden Christians need not apply. Paul uses the imagery of runners in a race. The one who gets the prize is the one who has trained the hardest, who is the most focused, who wants the title the most, and who sacrifices lesser things in order to win. The second crown is called the soul winner's crown by some. It's called in scripture the crown of rejoicing. We see uh, several scripture verses uh, pertaining to this one, including Daniel 12, 3, the guiding verse for resplendent daughter ministries. This crown pertains to those Christians who delight in winning souls to Jesus Christ. These are those in our congregation 
who are the first to come out for visitation night, who are always looking for an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus with a lost and dying world. They're the folks who love missions, who either want to go on mission trips or they fund mission trips. They love spreading the gospel of Jesus. The third crown is called the crown of life. It's sometimes called the martyr's crown. And as I mentioned earlier, Stephen was the first Christian martyr. He was a deacon in the Jerusalem church, which also indicates that he was involved with serving the congregation. I bet he'll receive many crowns at the Bema seat, including the martyr's crown. Won't that be a sight to behold? Witnessing all these brothers and sisters in Christ from across the ages receiving crowns of reward and blessing. This crown, the martyr's crown, is for those children of God whose love for him has endured and held true despite all sorts of terrible adversity that the devil threw at them, imprisonment, extreme suffering, even death. The fourth crown is called the crown of righteousness. This one is a little vague, but let me illustrate it like this. A visiting preacher at my church recently um, told us that he met his wife while on a mission trip to a European country. And when he met her, he immediately fell in love. Um, she was assigned to assist him on the mission trip by the local people there. And uh, after getting to know her a few days, he had to go home. But after he went back home, he wrote her over 300 letters over a two and a half month period. Then, at the end of that time, he returned to her country, courted her in person for a week, and not only proposed, but married her. And they're still married. Some, I don't know, how, I remember how many he said, but it was something like 20-something, almost 30-something years later. 2 Timothy 4, 8 speaks of those Christians who love Christ's appearing, that is, his return, his second coming to earth, as it's often called. This is not a casual, oh, I can't wait until the Lord comes back, which one might think ever so often. Instead, this is a burning love for the Savior that makes this Christian long for him, long to be with him so deeply that he or she can hardly wait until they are with him forever. Remember, the first century Christians believed, erroneously, that Jesus Christ would return in their lifetimes. We should have a similar expectation. It should burn in our hearts to want to be with him in person and to see him return. The fifth crown is called the crown of glory, sometimes called the shepherd's crown. I can't imagine how difficult the life of a pastor shepherd must be. In my many years in local churches, I've witnessed some pretty horrible treatment of the shepherd of the flock. I'm talking about the senior pastor here because it seems to me that this is sort of a head honcho type of crown. Still, it's not clear if this crown is for anyone in a ministerial position or a missionary assigned to a territory or both. What is clear is that there are qualifications for receiving this crown. Merely having the title is not enough to earn the reward. What is required is that the shepherd of the people watch over his flock carefully with a willing, eager heart, not because it's just a job, and that he doesn't shepherd the flock for dishonest gain. Peter warns shepherds not to wield their power like a weapon, or to lord it over the people, but instead to be examples of the resplendent walk to them, to live holy lives of humility. One thing I'm sure of is that we don't pray for our pastors nearly enough or encourage them enough or love them enough to compensate for the difficult calling that God has given them. So there you have them, the believer's five crowns. You may have visions of parading around heaven, wearing your many crowns, but 
Let's close by reminding ourselves of Revelation 4, 9 through 11, which reminds us of who alone is worthy. Verse 11 there says, Worthy are you, our Lord, Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. If you're familiar with a contemporary Christian band named Casting Crowns, this is where their name originated. Is it not reasonable to conclude that we, following the example of the 24 elders, will similarly lay our crowns before Jesus' throne in worship and adoration? We'll certainly worship him as we never have before, with all that is in us, and perhaps on us. Let's close in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for being much more than worthy. If after I cross the finish line, I find that you've allotted to me any crowns, I look forward to casting them reverently at your nail-pierced feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for stopping by today. I hope that you'll return and not only check out more of my videos, but check out all of the other vloggers' videos here at the Empower channel my very gifted brothers and sisters in Christ. I know you'll receive a blessing from them. I welcome you to visit my written blog. The address is on the screen and reach out to me there by commenting. Also by commenting on Twitter if you so desire. And I look forward to seeing you here again soon.